So very good morning, distinguished chairpersons and uh, my colleagues. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through, in the coming years, tragicolectomy will be the surgical procedure in patients with advanced uncontrolled glaucoma. So is tragicolectomy still the king? There's hardly any audience. I answer it, yes. The truth is, the smallest hole can drain the largest container unless it is made intentionally to do so. So if you look at these spaces, they're very familiar. When we had the elections in 2014, welcome. Uh, we also had some of these spaces, but they've still been contesting and contesting, just like trabeculectomy, trabeculectomy reigns supreme and the gold standard. But to contest with trabeculectomy, we have the contenders like sclerectomy, viscocanalostomy, the gold shunt, the eye stent, the express shunt, the eczema laser trabeculotomy, the canaloplasty, the gen gel, zen gel implant, and the tubes and shunts as primary procedures. So reviewing the literature, I found that this uh, viscocanalostomy versus trabeculectomy for primary open angle glaucoma, a four-year prospective randomized clinical trial, and they concluded that in this study, we found trabeculectomy to be more effective at lowering intraocular pressure than viscocanalostomy in primary open angle glaucoma. The other famous study, the tube versus trabeculectomy study, also had a conclusion that tube shunt surgery is an appropriate surgical option in patients who have undergone unsuccessful trabeculectomy. So glaucoma surgery, as you all know, has traditionally been all about efficacy. Serious safety issues have promo promoted evolutionary improvements. Trabeculectomy is an excellent procedure, but of course only when it succeeds. To ensure it does, you've got to avoid many landmines along the way, like conjunctival buttonholes over and under filtration, and hemorrhage. Over the years, we've seen that surgeons do well and could do better when performing this procedure, and so we have the Moulfield state surgery system of trabeculectomy. So I have no financial interest in this, but uh, preoperatively, if you instill a drop of primonidin into your conjunctival sac, the peripheral alpha-2 agonist activity results in vasoconstriction of the vessels, and as a result, you have almost a bloodless field. You can see your way well. So intraoperative tips, the Wexel fluid dissection to your left can help avoid complications by making the conjunctiva more mobile, and to your right is uh, lift the conjunctiva with non-tooth forceps to make the incision. So you can do a limbus space or a conic space, whatever you are comfortable with. So this is a conjunctival separator, which I have uh, designed. It's mitomycin C is applied in a wide pocket under the conjunctiva at a concentration of 0.2 or 0.5, whichever one you think is right for your particular patient. For I generally apply it for two minutes. And then, of course, it is taken out and profusely washed. The scleral flap, a horizontal parallel incision to the limbus is made, dissecting a partial thickness scleral pocket. Two sides of the incision are cut using specially designed scissors without completing the incision right up to the limbus. Those are the scissors which I designed for the scleral flap, and this helps in directing the aqueous backwards over a wider area, encouraging greater posterior flow and a more diffuse bled. So uh, that's the uh, punching out the ostium, perpendicular clean, non-shelled incision at the sclerolimbal junction. The ostium is punched out with the scaly punch. The scleral flap sutures, you can use fixed or releasable sutures. Here, this is a releasable suture, relatively easy to do if you've done it uh, several times through the limbus into the conjunctiva and out through the conjunctiva onto the scleral flap and out of the lip. And then you give, say, four throws and take the loop out so that you can actually titrate your intraocular pressure post-operatively. And now that we are using powerful anti-metabolites, you can actually titrate it right up to the second and third week. So this is uh, the other option of not using mitomycin, though of course nowadays they advocate that use both mitomycin and uh, collagen. But then ologen is something which you, it's relatively simple to use. So you just finish your trabeculectomy. This is an old surgery of mine, so it has a triangular flap. And you just put, uh, put the ologen 
and close your conjunctiva as you normally would. So it normalizes wound healing process, randomizes the growth of microfibroblasts, regenerates tissue remodeling, and prevents scarf formation. So the peroperative surgical pearls are considered topical or parabulba anesthesia. Never use tooth forceps to handle your conjunctiva. Aim for watertight conjunctival closure. Lower high preoperative intraocular pressure. Never leave the operating room with an unclosed leak. So the management of filtering bleb after surgery, especially during the first three weeks, like phaco surgery, you finish on the table and that's the end. But for glaucoma surgery, it, the whole fun actually begins post-operatively when you've got to regulate a lot of things. Timing of suture removal is uh, predicted on the IOP, the appearance of the bleb and the degree of filtration desired for the individual patient. Suture manipulation is avoided during the first post-operative week if possible. The idle time to alter flap suture is two to three weeks after surgery. Flap suture manipulation after the fourth post-operative week is often less effective. Though response in antifibrotic used augmented trabeculectomies may be more vigorous and possible later in the post-operative course. In the er early post-operative period, you need to sometimes give a digital massage for the bleb. Laser suturalysis and releasable sutures are useful techniques, but always handle one suture at a time or you could cause hypotony. Early recognition of signs of scarring and an appropriate treatment improves the rate of success of trabeculectomy. Always try conservative treatment with encapsulated bleb. An aqueous misdirection is a difficult complication to man manage. The best approach is to prevent the initiating factor that is in high risk eyes and common cause of serous choroidal detachment is a conjunctival wound leak. Identification of the primary cause and appropriate treatment should be the first step in the management. The late post-operative complications, early post-operative hypotony leads to chronic hypotony. So avoid low IOP right in the beginning, especially in eyes treated with antimetabolites. Patient education is important to minimize the risk of bleb leak. Failure of the bleb can occur at any time following Surgery, so post-operative follow-up is a must for all patients. Tear film disturbances occur often, so you need to give your patients outpatient tears. And immediate and aggressive treatment of bleb infection can actually salvage the eye. So here we have the intraoperative and the post-operative complications. I've already spoken to you about them, so I would not go into details anymore. So trabeculectomy still remains the gold standard as the initial surgery for glaucoma. Technical modifications to the trabeculectomy combined with the use of powerful antimetabolites enable the surgeon to have a greater control of both the operation and the post-operative period. The safer surgery systems development is based on the need to improve consistency. Trabeculectomy with MMC is a complex operation requiring high degree of manual dexterity and extensive glaucoma experience. And I encourage those of you who do do glaucoma surgery to regard trabeculectomy as the treatment, surgical treatment of choice for initial uh, surgical treatment. Thank you very much for your.